Hi, my name is Christine Nao Katzman, publisher and editor in chief of Halftime Magazine, bringing you the sights, sounds, and spirit of the marching arts. Welcome to our first ever webinar. Today, we are partnering with Clubhouse Trailer Company, the premier provider of logistics solutions for the marching arts. Founders Drew Taylor and Jeff Hadley will discuss innovations in trailer design to secure instruments, uniforms, and more so you can safely move your equipment across town or across the country. In 2010, two band dads, Drew Taylor and Jeff Hadley, started Clubhouse Trailers after successfully designing and building the Bulldog One for Edmond, Oklahoma Memorial High School. Drew is the Vice President of Operations, previously working at FedEx office as a market sales manager and senior trainer for 11 years. Jeff is the Vice President of Innovation with a degree in Mechanical Design from Oklahoma State University. Jennifer Sharp and Daniel Muskies from Clubhouse Trailers will be handling the technical aspects of today's meeting. And now I turn it over the meeting to Drew and Jeff. Great, thanks Christine. Welcome to the Clubhouse. We affectionately call the Clubhouse the uh, center of marching logistics in America. Um, we're the only company on the planet that does what we do, and we just, we couldn't be any more excited to have you join us here at the Clubhouse today. Um, Christine, you may or may not remember that um, the Clubhouse was actually featured 10 long years ago in Halftime Magazine in a gear up section. And um, we, we attribute a lot of our success to that single gear up article. Um, and I love your, your pre-recorded introduction um, about being a, uh, a booster uh, board member for your son's school. Um, I found myself in that same situation and uh, Jeff was a long time contributor to uh, uh, the Ed Memorial Program. Long, long time, time. contributor. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, so um, we can have great rivalries between uh, uh, the Cincinnati area and Dayton. So uh, welcome everybody to the Clubhouse. Um, today we're going to talk through some of the best practices that we figured out, um, not just simply in building lots of trailers, but talking to programs all over the country and the experience we had being band dads um, taught us a ton. And we continue to learn from groups all over the country every single day. And that goes into a lot of the innovation that I make Jeff responsible for yeah, thanks, Drew. day in and day out. <laughs> um, so uh, today is going to be a mix of live, of pre-recorded, of Q&A. But we want you to uh, feel comfortable here in the clubhouse. We welcome you. Um, and we're excited to share some of the things that we have learned over time. And for this first transition, I'm gonna leave that to Jennifer to launch our first video. One of the ways that we use 3D printing here at the clubhouse is to support the manufacturing process. There are some pieces that just don't make sense to be cut out of aluminum or done in any other way. So we've done some prototyping. We started with our stair feet, thought about what those would look like in aluminum. We weren't real happy with that. They were going to be heavy and expensive. So we were able to rapidly prototype a 3D printed piece as a mock-up a proof of concept to make sure that what we thought was going to work would, and that created our stair foot, which is now 3D printed and deployed on all of our stairs and our trailers. So the 3D printing process here at the clubhouse is super important because it allows us to rapidly prototype and then create stuff that we put in our builds day in and day out. Um, here we are out in the shop floor. Here in the clubhouse, I have five build bays that allow us to have five trailers going at any given time. Uh, some of the cool things that we do 
is at the back of every bay behind Daniel's head, who's manning the camera, uh, behind Daniel's head is a webcam. So when we get a trailer here in the clubhouse, we send that webcam link out to our band directors so that they can watch the progress. They send it out to their boosters and administrators and everybody starts to get super excited about their build and they can watch it over time. Uh, it's, it's certainly a cool thing. So I'm out here in one of our trailers. Um, this happens to be in our Thunder Bay, um, named for, of course, the OKC Thunder. Um, and here in the Thunder Bay, I have an example of one of our products called Clubhouse Light. Clubhouse Light is a super budget-friendly approach to um, the essentials that most band programs need to go to war. Now, we know that every director has a different reign of terror than every other director. Um, but this gives us a really solid foundation and a trailer that we can stand behind, one that's got a great wrap that's designed by Daniel um, that really creates that community showpiece for you. But what we have figured out over time is that there are some just foundational things that are important to every trailer. I'm standing on the first one, which is our ramp system. So this system of our lightweight aluminum ramps is an easy to deploy option that is cost effective and um, super safe and efficient. You will hear me say safe and efficient over and over and over again, because that's the only reason the clubhouse exists, is we're trying to promote safety for participants, uh, staff, parents, instruments. We need to be efficient so you're not the last ones in the lot on a Saturday night with cell phone flashlights looking for <laughs> that lost set of keys. We've been there. Um, so everything that we do is driven around safety and efficiency. So I apologize if that sounds like a broken record. But we're on our super safe and efficient lightweight aluminum ramp product. Again, super budget friendly. Daniel, come join me upstairs. We have sourced this Kentucky trailer very specifically for this product. This is our clubhouse light. It's important that a, that a Kentucky trailer that you source for a van trailer has 120 inch sidewalls. That's a minimum. We want it to have a nicely reconditioned floor. We want it to have logistics posts in the walls. We don't want it to be a Frito-Lay trailer. We don't want it to be a Stoughton trailer. We really need it to be a Kentucky brand moving van. Um, that's super important. Um, it allows us to have an architecture that makes a lot of sense. We have a clear span downstairs Downstairs is primarily reserved for front ensemble. Um, it gives us a clear span. There's nothing in the way downstairs. It gives us a second floor that's highly usable. We have a split entry. In this particular trailer, we have some instrument storage, a drum wall. Standard feature in a clubhouse trailer is our electric stair. Electric stair is just safer and it's more efficient. Now, you're noticing probably the LED lighting. That's standard in every one of our clubhouse trailer products. Lighting is so important to make sure that we're being safe and efficient. That lighting is actually coming from a set of batteries. Those batteries are being charged by two solar panels that we put on the roof of the trailer. Those two solar panels provide all of our charge power so that we've got plenty of electricity, 12 volt DC for our LED lighting, both upstairs and downstairs inside and out, as well as things like our um, stair products. So our clubhouse light offering is some of the things that we found that are just, you have to have in a van trailer, just the core things that make it, um, make it most efficient for you. So that's what we've created here in the clubhouse light. And we'll answer some, uh, some questions in Q&A about that when we get there. Um, our next video, is all about the loading and unloading process. At our core, Jeff and I are band dads. We know how important it is to safely and efficiently move this very expensive equipment. We want to make it a great experience for participants, staff, parents and supporters.
We've been in the lot late at night and know what it's like to be the last ones out. So we want to make sure that the solutions that we deploy provide for a very safe and efficient solution for your program. Daniel and I sprinted outside, so I'm a little bit out of breath, but here we are in another trailer, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this one um, a little bit later um, this evening. Um, but I wanted to highlight, we just saw the Clubhouse Light product. I want to show you an alternative, um, and this is in one of our full custom trailers. So Daniel, come on upstairs with me. This particular trailer, I said every director has a different approach and a different need. Every solution that we create is custom to the needs of each individual program. This particular director wanted uniform wraps. So they're traveling with their entire complement of uniforms. The kids aren't wearing them on the buses. They're not carrying them on the buses. They want to keep them on their semi, which is great. We've got a solution for that. Here, we can hold close to 300 uniforms um, on two rows. Um, so uh, we have uh, uniform racks, super important um, to some programs. It may not be to yours, but in our consultation process, we understand, we, we truly dive into your program. We want to know what your instrumentation looks like, what your growth strategy looks like, what your enrollment percentage to total student enrollment looks like, what your middle school feeder program looks like, what's your battery look like. Um, what are the things that you want as you continue to grow and develop? We learn all of that in the early process so that we can create a trailer that's going to last you 20 years, way past when your reign of terror is going to be over and somebody else is stuck with a trailer that you designed. Um, so I'm going to have Daniel spin around. This is an alternative to the Clubhouse Light split entry that we saw inside. This is what we call our traditional layout. It is a vestibule entry. Um, on the curbside, coming up into the nose, three more steps up to the upstairs. Upstairs is a commercial grade uh, closed loop carpet. We have instrument storage, we have sousaphone storage. We have a really cool thing we call a tubivator. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but this is our traditional product um, and it supports programs that operate just a little bit differently. It's an alternative to the Clubhouse Light split entry. Um, we're going to uh, show you a quick video about our third option, which is the flying carpet. One question we get a lot at the clubhouse is, Drew, what is a flying carpet? Well, the flying carpet is the clubhouse solution to front ensemble being stored upstairs. It really doesn't make sense to have a big long ramp taking up a ton of real estate that foot pedals and resonators are just going to drag on anyway. So what we've done is we've moved the entire second floor up to a transport height above six feet. It gives you a clear span downstairs for additional equipment and we can include a feature such as a interior ramp. This flying carpet floor allows for the secure stowage of that front ensemble equipment on the moving floor and it's transported upstairs. Okay, so we've run back inside. Um, we're back in the clubhouse, um, and I'm at the back of our box truck. So just like you all, traveling with multiples of box trucks, the clubhouse has our own box truck. Uh, we use it a little bit differently than you do, though. Um, you just saw the video about our flying carpet. In our box truck, we have our own flying carpet. Um, and we did this because we need to do just the same as a lot of other programs. We need to maximize equipment density which is the reason to go with the flying carpet design. In that design, you're typically going to have front ensemble upstairs and all of your individual instruments and equipment and storage and uniforms and whatnot downstairs, whether it's on carts or racks or flight cases or whatever, right? So we have 
This is the response to front ensemble upstairs. Um, a big long interior ramp doesn't make any sense. It takes up a ton of real estate. Um, it has to be still super steep and you're going to drag foot pedals and resonators and all that stuff. And we just avoid all that. We just move the entire second floor. So here in our box truck, we do that um, so that we can uh, increase our equipment density. You're probably asking, Drew, what the heck does Clubhouse need high equipment density for? Well, this truck's a little bit special. Um, this is the truck that we use for a product called Trailer in a Day. So we have had a lot of people that have said, Drew, you know what? We've got our own trailer. I don't need you to find us one. Um, we've got some band dads who have some skills, but they don't want to do it on their own. And we really like what you guys do. Great. We have a product called Trailer in a Day. I bring this uh, cool handy dandy mobile clubhouse to your band rehearsal lot where your semi is and I show up at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning and by 6.30 that night, I'm driving away and you've got a clubhouse trailer built with a second floor, with stairs, with um, lightweight aluminum ramps, with uh, solar panels, LED lighting, a carpeted second floor. You're completely decked out. Um, and that's what we use this mobile clubhouse for. Um, so I just wanted to show you how easy it is um, to use the flying carpet uh, imagine, if you will, we've unloaded all the equipment from downstairs. Uh, I'm going to unlock the floor real quick. And I'm just going to silently lower it all the way down to the ground. Um, super easy to use. All the power for this comes from the batteries that have been charged from solar. Everything's self-contained. Um, we put a little bit of thought into it to make your lives a little bit easier, I'm hoping. Um, and because there are some programs that just want the front ensemble upstairs. Um, and rather than us not agreeing with it, we built a product that would accommodate it. So it has a uh, super uh, uh, sloped uh, approach plate that acts as the ramp up to that flying carpet so that I can roll that sensitive front ensemble equipment upstairs. In this case, um, we have some racking, a drum wall, our toolbox, um, so that it all is streamlined for our use a set of our retracting stairs, and of course we're using our lightweight aluminum ramps. Um, so very cool. I've got a bunch of product highlights so that you can see a lot of the things that we've talked about or some of the things that we haven't because we won't have time today. So Daniel, if you'll press play. There are a number of products that we're not going to have a chance to highlight today. So I wanted to chat through just a few of those. One of those is our lightweight aluminum ramps. These easy to deploy ramps allow for great coverage on the back of a trailer to give you safe and efficient loading and unloading of people and equipment. The stands that we use are toolless and pinless and just simply drop into place. The ramps can be stored either in a belly box or rolled up on the back deck of the trailer. They're easy to unroll and deploy and set in place by just two people. At 22 and a half inches wide each and 14 feet long, they give a great amount of support. One of our new features are our powered rear stairs. They're simply switch operated and powered from our same battery system that we use in all of our trailers. They have an integrated handrail that's mounted to the wall. Jeff Hadley, our VP of innovation, is the big giant head in the clubhouse process. He dreams up some really cool stuff and one of those new products is our powered side stair. While we've always had a really cool side stair, now we have one that's powered and has an integrated handrail that self deploys and self stows. Our guard drawers allow for efficient storage of those flag bags, simply integrated into the existing belly boxes of a semi-trailer. They're on full extension drawer slides, 
and each drawer is four feet deep and eight feet wide. In most cases, we deploy two guard drawers in a trailer. Our tube evader allows for the safe and efficient movement using a simple two button pendant of those awkward and heavy sousaphone cases from the ground up through the open second floor gate. Simply snap the tuba case onto the hook and raise it into place. I know we crammed a bunch of products in that short video, but I wanted you to get a sense of the solutions that we build for programs all over the country. Now we're still outside of our box truck and we've got a little bit of a hike to get to the next thing. So bear with us. Um, but I thought it was important that we highlighted the box truck for two reasons. Number one is the really cool tree. We love our tree. It is our brand. And then this super cool awning. So you're probably thinking, Oh, come on, Drew, an awning. Well, it's more important than you think. Not only does it protect the sensitive front ensemble equipment and sound equipment from rain, but also from sun as well. So we've deployed uh, several um, automatic retracting awnings on a, sub, on a few projects and we absolutely love them. Um, and you might too. So Daniel, get your running shoes on, let's go. Okay, so our newest innovation here at the Clubhouse is our product that we call Total Electric. Our process for our full custom trailers used to be a hybrid between electric and hydraulic. And not to say they were unreliable, but we wanna to continue to make it better and better and better. So what we've done is we've created a ramp system that we've updated to Total Electric. There's a set of electric actuators, both underneath the ramp and on the floor, and the trailer's software driven. It's smarter than we are. Um, it is super cool. All the functions of the trailer, whether it's um, lighting um, uh, or low voltage disconnect, um, managing solar power, um, moving our stairs up and down. All that's managed through a panel. So we worked with an integrator to make sure that we've come up with the right panel solution um, that manages all the functions. It could be the flying carpet, it could be the interior stairs, it could be the full width powered ramp. So uh, Daniel, you're going to have to back up a little bit to see this pool. Oh, I got to do one more thing first. Ramp up. So I don't have to tell you how cool this would be to show up at a contest and have this guy coming out of the back doors of your trailer, right? It's your brand still closing behind it. This is not a door. This is just a ramp. It only takes up 10 and a half inches inside the back of the trailer, but it's 15 feet long. And then the back doors close around it. I would show you the back doors, but this trailer is still a secret until it gets delivered to the customer. Again, this is our brand new for 2020 Total Electric. And now um, we're gonna run over to the Annex. So enjoy our golf cart ride. Another exciting product from the clubhouse are our custom golf carts. These expertly reconditioned carts are to help you move people and equipment safely and efficiently across your sprawling contest sites. They include features such as convertible seats and trailer hitches. 
They're of course painted and branded just like your trailer. Join me as we move to the second building in the clubhouse complex. The annex houses our newest product, the small trailer solution. These brand new trailers are built from the ground up with your needs in mind. They're available in both gooseneck and bumper pull options from 20 to 32 feet. They include features such as loading ramp, side door, solar, LED lighting, instrument storage, drum wall, and even uniform racks. And of course, they're wrapped just like our larger semis to be a community showpiece. And if you need a truck to pull your new trailer, the Clubhouse is a dealer for Sport Chassis, another great Oklahoma company. So what you just saw was our unveiling of our small trailer solution. And wasn't that truck super cool, the new Sport Chassis trucks? Um, couldn't have looked better. So that Tishmingo trailer, and a big shout out to Hank Patterson at Tishmingo High School for letting um, us use his program as a guinea pig as we prototyped our small trailer solution. We've heard from customers all over the country that have said, Drew, that's great. We love your, your semis. They look fantastic, but I don't need all that. Well, that's right. You don't need all that yet. But um, what we needed to do is come up with a solution that made sense for smaller programs. Um, any smaller programs, or uh, you need a trailer for your small ensembles, or you need a trailer for Winter Drumline, or you need a trailer to go to uh, Dayton to WGI, um, go Flyers. Um, so um, we created a small trailer solution. It is all the things that are important about our full-size products scaled down into a smaller solution. So the trailer that you saw in the video was the Tishmingo trailer. Um, it was a trailer that we built from the ground up to our specifications. Now, that won't always work. You may already have an existing trailer that you want uh, tricked out by the clubhouse. That's a great example of this white one behind me. This is a trailer that was purchased by Blanchard High School here in Oklahoma uh, before we even had a small trailer solution. So they picked up this beautiful elite all aluminum trailer and asked us if we could modify it. And using the things that we figured out in Hank's trailer, Tishmingo, we're doing the same thing for Jen and the folks at Blanchard. So let's go around the back and take a look at what makes a good small trailer solution. You have to start with the right trailer. You wanna make sure that the rig that you're getting makes sense for the program, uh, whether that's through us or consulting with us on what makes the most sense. In the case of this trailer, um, it came to us as a really bright aluminum shell. Um, so what we did is we put a, a wooden subfloor in with our standard um, closed loop carpet front to back. We've added a set of stairs up to that attic space. The attic space we've converted to a drum wall. Uh, and because it's custom to the instrumentation of Blanchard, the cabinet that's here on the floor is a custom drum cabinet as well. So we size that for Blanchard's instrumentation. We have uniform racks, we have shelves for Shaco storage, we have individual uniform storage, and the most important thing is we have our LED lighting package that is gonna provide that safety and efficiency. We have both LED lighting inside as well as outside. Again, that's run through a set of 12 volt batteries, that's charged from solar, it's got our same low voltage disconnect, our same protection circuits. Everything that makes for a good solid clubhouse trailer is now scaled down into a small trailer solution. Um, E-track in the walls so that it's easy for us to um, uh, tie equipment in, front ensemble equipment, sousaphones, uh, sound equipment, all that stuff that's important now will have a home and be transported safely and efficiently. Whether it's in a trailer that um, you provide or have sourced or have donated or have fundraised for or have had in your uh, back lot for forever and now you want to finally do something cool with it, um, get it wrapped. This one is going to have a killer wrap on it 
Um, Daniel is our media manager and he just does an amazing job on graphics. Um, and you'll see a little bit more about that in just a minute. Um, I'm gonna take a breath for a minute, let Daniel's video play on his graphics process, and I'm gonna meet you over back in the clubhouse. All right, so let's talk about the graphics, the wrapping on the gift, the icing on the cake. When you purchase a clubhouse trailer, you're getting a beautifully designed interior and exterior. We're talking full color, digitally printed vinyl graphics that come with a 10 year color fade guarantee that's backed by 3M. For many programs out there, these trailers not only serve as a safe and efficient means of transportation, but also as a community showpiece, a point of pride that can excite and inspire. So here at the clubhouse, we are committed to working with our customers on creating stellar designs that will promote brand identity and culture. The design process itself is relatively simple. We start by establishing the basics, that's colors, text, logos, so that we can draw up a concept design as a starting point. From there, we are able to communicate back and forth, exchange ideas, and revise until the design is complete. Once the graphics are finalized, they are sent to the largest fleet printer in the country where the vinyl panels are produced on a specialized printer. Then, when the panels arrive in Oklahoma, they are seamed together into a single sheet and installed by our vinyl expert, who can wrap one of these community showpieces in about a day and a half. For those of you out there that might be fundraising in order to purchase a trailer, the Clubhouse can help. Be sure to let us know so that we can provide you with concept graphics to help open up those wallets. Our brand manager can also work with you to help with any promotion or presence needed to jumpstart your campaign and can help you plan an unveiling celebration when your trailer is delivered. Okay, so we're done running around the clubhouse complex um, like crazy people. Um, the folks on the street are probably wondering what the heck we're doing. Um, so uh, we've got some Q&A um, that's been sent in ahead of time. Uh, we've got some that I think is coming through chat that um, Jennifer and Christine are going to help us moderate. Um, but I want to hit on a couple of the things that have come up um, already. So one of the questions that came up was um, about a phased approach. And we love phased approaches because it allows you to build excitement over time. You don't have to create an all-in solution at once. You can uh, source the trailer and get it wrapped and run it empty for a season while you fundraise. You can then add a build-out with lighting and solar and a second floor in the second season. And then in the third season, you can add a drum wall and instrument shelves. And then in the fourth season, you go crazy and you, uh, you get a full width powered ramp and you get a tube evader and whatever Experience. other cool stuff that we've come up with. Um, we love phased approaches. So I hope that answers um, the, that question. Um, we've talked a lot about um, best practices that we've figured out, but I think one of the coolest things that gets glossed over is our approach to the architecture. So Jeff, why don't you talk about the way we've sized our cabinets and why we've chosen an open concept. Sure, the cabinets that are used that you saw in the videos are open space, primarily to handle, they're sized out for the mellows, the, the mellophones, trumpets, uh, saxophones, that general, those general instruments. You know, the DCI cores, those, those folks are very, uh, very specific in the way their cabinetry is done in there, but their sizes don't change. The high school marching band, those sections change every year. They could be 12 trumpets one, one season, the next season they may be 14 or 16. So that cabinetry is open to give you that flexibility as your, as your program sizes change. Yeah, and the key to that is by having a real open architecture, we're allowing that, that flexibility and that nimbleness that happens over time. Your program's gonna change. Um, the trailer has to be able to live with that because you're kind of stuck with it for a long time because it's been built well. Um, we're not taking up a ton of real estate with 
um, with uh, two by fours and a lot of plywood and structure and two by sixes and we've seen it all and you may already have that trailer and I don't want to hurt your feelings um, but our approach is sleek streamlined it's very space efficient very space efficient we've engineered some things that just make sense um, so uh, hopefully some of those things help you think about um, a way to, to, to approach your project a little bit differently. Um, one of the other things that's, that's come up is what are some of the keys to what we do? Um, we have figured out things like our door span, the way to carry the weight of the second floor across an open doorway, um, because we want all the doors to be able to open, number one, for airflow, number two, so that you can still use those openings to move equipment in and out quickly. Um, but we have to be able to support that second floor because normally that second floor would have been attached to the doors and it may be in your trailer too. Um, so we've created a door span product that allows us to do that. Um, the things that we have done, and over my shoulder here, you'll see um, a piece of scrap. This is a piece of half inch aluminum plate that was water jet cut. Um, a lot of our structural aluminum components we've designed, we have water jet cut here locally finish here locally, they go to anodizing, they're ready for a long career Seven of use. Yeah. Um, so that is one ramp um, that's come out of the clubhouse and we thought it was kind of cool as a piece of scrap. So we put it up on the wall. Um, so there are just some things that make sense in the way we do things. Um, and a lot of those things we make available as kits. Um, our door span, our lighting products, solar panels, our power management with the low voltage disconnect, uniform, uniform racks are another great example of things that are just easy for us to palletize, send out to you with some instructions for your very talented band dads to be able to put in your own trailer. Um, so those are some of the things that, that we've kind of figured out as best practices that create a great foundation. That also dries, as you described. The use of Kentucky brand trailers. You had mentioned earlier, don't go looking for the Frito Lays or some of those others. All of these items are designed to be used with a Kentucky brand trailer. Those are the most common trailers out there, the most readily available trailers out there. So everything we do fits onto that structure. The floor, the door spans, the uniform racks, they all hang on those e track slots on the, side, on the inside of those trailers which is a great point because we actually use the structure, the way that trailer was designed, to hang all the weight on the walls. Um, so that gives us a great use of space. We're very efficient and our materials are long lasting. They're super durable. They look really, really cool. Our architecture is kind of cool with all the structure all over them. Um, uh, our wire mesh, stuff like that. So um, I think that's, I, I hit the high points of some of the questions that I got. Um, Jennifer, I'm gonna let you tell us, or Christine, I don't want to jump. Uh, and Christine may want to start a fight about Cincinnati versus Dayton, Mason versus the Wayne Warriors. I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> it's Midwest. It's Midwest. Um, how's that? Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Drew and Jeff. That was a wonderful presentation. That was it was very seamless going from live video to uh, to to the to the pre-recorded video. And yeah, you all did a wonderful job. Um, I think for Q and A, what we can do is uh, go from some of the Q and A submitted from the current participants, and then some of the Q and A that was pre-submitted. Um, and if anybody wants to jump in live, you don't have to chat. If you prefer to jump in and speak, uh, you can raise your hand or just simply unmute. Um, but we can start with a question from Tyndall that he put into the chat. He says, we currently have a single axle van line trailer. I think we gross at 50K. How much can we get with a double axle? And then he did clarify, our current tractor is a truck that was used as an in-town tow vehicle. I think it will handle a larger trailer. We are contemplating a second large trailer that we would rent a tractor if we need to go over the road. Yep. Am I off mute somewhere? You're good, yep. Okay, great. So that's Thanks a great for your question, Tyndall. That's a great one. We have not had one like that before. Ask about a single axle trailer. Yeah, so uh, a couple things in that. Uh, a single axle uh, tractor is actually kind of a cool thing because it makes that uh, tractor super nimble um, and you're not giving up carrying capacity. 
the um, interesting thing about a van trailer is it doesn't max out on weight. It maxes out on Space. you can only fill it with so much air uh, because you know the instrument cases are full of air more than they're full of instruments. Uh, so we don't have a, a worry um, about maxing out the weight. And 50,000 pounds, my goodness. Pulled over one it's at its heaviest day, right. most bloated day full of We're everything. hauling 21, 22,000 pounds of equipment inside the trailer. The trailer uh, is, is going across the scale empty at about 12 to 15,000 pounds. So you're only sitting at you know, 35 to 40,000 pounds total. Uh, so your tractor is is quite fine. In fact, when we were first doing our, our memorial trailer, there's a lot of times that we picked up a single axle day cab to do just the short hauls because we didn't play at our high school. Our football games were at a stadium three miles away. And for us on a tight budget, a single axle day cab tractor was the most the most economical for us to use. So well, and it can get us great. through the neighborhood. It can get us through the neighborhood behind the high school as well. So that don't let that single axle uh, day cap yeah, be a, it's a great. deterrent. Um, it's right. actually a benefit in a lot of ways. Uh, it makes for longer trips a little bit harder. If you're trying to do a road trip, it does. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's a it's a great great thing for local. And you may want to take that uh, that single axle axle tractor that you have and actually run it across the scales. I think you'll be surprised at how little weight you're actually carrying. I don't know if that answered the question or not, but we'll, uh, yeah. we'll find out in chat. I think uh, Tyndall followed up. He said the trailer is double and the tractor is a double axle. You're a good you're, ratio. You're fa fantastic. I love it. That's a great solution. Yeah. Feel free to unmute yourself. Tyndall, <laughs> uh, your trailer, tandem axle trailer, grosses out at thousand pounds uh, so uh, just as a reference so your tractor has a gross uh, towing of uh, 50,000 you just will never get there uh, hauling band equipment in your yeah. tandem axle trailer yeah you'll cube out yeah. Yeah, our tractor is uh it's a double axle it's an international that was I, i'm not really sure the trailer is a single axle van line trailer that's been converted it's a dual dual deck uh I think it grosses at 50. I think Dave took it across the scales one time. It was like 50 pounds below max. So we, you know, and we're the band that has the big tarps sometimes. So oh, you're one of those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going mute. Okay. So, you know, um, certainly uh, structure, the way that trailer was built, plays into that a lot. Um, it's an older trailer. An older trailer being a steel trailer. It's going to be a little bit heavier as well. Now, we work with steel trailers too. Um, our, our typical right now is um, 1999 to 2006 trailers, and those are all steel. It's a question of how it's constructed. It's a lot of lumber. Um, it's yeah, going to be a little time. bit heavier. Okay, here's a question that was resubmitted. What components do you find that bands are, are the most surprised by? Something they weren't sure they wanted, but wound up loving? Um, number one thing is uniform racks. Most people thought, uh, I'm not going to want those. I'm going to want to keep uniforms on the bus, so the kids are always going to wear them. And then the first couple of uniform racks, enough for the loading crew, and they go, goodness. We can have everybody keep their uniforms on the bus. And that on becomes trailer. on the on the trailer, right. and that becomes a huge benefit to them. So, uh, uniform racks has been the biggest surprise. Um, guard drawers are another one. We've had programs come back to us and say, "Please, please, please add more guard drawers." Um, so that's that's quite a surprise. Um, those things are super flexible. Not only are they great for um, flag bags, but we also know um, uh, the the battery will put their stand stands in them. Um, auxiliary percussion equipment goes in them. Um, they've got a really high capacity to have a lot of stuff in them. Um, so that tends to work out really well. Um, those are the two biggest surprises, I think. Um, and then most people don't know, are, are really surprised about how easy it is to operate a trailer. Um, they thought it was going to be just super We're going to have to be engineers to figure it out. Um, but when we go to a reveal or send it's out easy videos, load. it's easy become load. super easy. 
Maybe I'll, right. I'll, I'll turn it over to iPhone 323. Hello, how you doing? Uh, uh, my name is Nathaniel Lewis. I'm out here in Los Angeles, California. Hi, and, um, yeah, I'm the direct, director of Vessel Drum and Bugle Corps out here in LA. Um, we, we have a trailer. We just got a, another uh, Kentucky trailer, a uh, single drop. Um, 53 is about 2010. Uh, we want to build it out, and luckily, I went on your um, web page yesterday and saw this thing. I was like, "Oh, this is cool!" I was, you know, going to steal your ideas, so you know. Oh um, <laughs> uh, no, you guys are doing great. Thank you. Uh, I tried to text, uh, type a message in between watching videos, and I totally screwed it up. So I figured I'd raise my hand. Um, so uh, some of the products that you have, um, I'm all the way here in California. If there's some things that that I wanted, can we contact you and you would mail those things to us first and install? It, it depends on what they are. Some things are, um, because of the way they're integrated into the trailer, we really need to do some of those things here at the clubhouse. Um, but one of the really cool things about the clubhouse is we're in the center of the country. And yeah. despite what some people think about Oklahoma, we actually have paved roads. They go east to west. They go east to west and north to south. Right, right, right. <laughs> Real trains. Um, and we, we deal with um, trailers all over the country. And Oklahoma makes it a super easy kind of center of the U.S., um, easy for us to get everywhere or get things to and from everywhere. And moving a trailer isn't as expensive as you may think. So definitely reach out to us, um, whether it's we'll uh, an email to info at clubhousetrailers.com or give me a call. My, phone, my cell phone number's on the website. I think it's on um, the, the follow-up information that you'll get. Um, so feel free to give me a call. We'll chat through those things. Some things we can do as kits, some things we have to do here at the clubhouse just because of the way they're integrated into the trailer. Um, or bring the box truck out and do it in your lot. That's an option too. So. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I believe he, he did type a question in it that said, do you have a price list for the add-ons? Is there an easy way to figure that out? So um, everything that we quote, um, we do as a scripted work quote. And we do it that way because it's not just simply an a la carte menu that you're going to pick. Um, I want the, uh, the cashew chicken and then I want, right? So we add um, a, a little bit more thought into how we quote and the quote engine that we use. And we look at it as what's the total sum of work. The best thing for us to do is to chat about your program, chat about what you're trying to do. Some things I can price list, like trailer in a day and kits. But once we get to things like um, Clubhouse Lite with some additions um, or a full custom, it really is about us understanding your program. Um, it's a little bit more work at the front end, but the product at the back end is much better. Thank you. Thank you. OK, here's a pre-submitted question. It says, um, what is the best non-slip material, non-slip ramp material? Um, Before or after generation two? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the answer to that is our ramp material. Um, so we've, we've actually designed our own plank um, because we weren't happy with the non-skid of what was out there in the universe. So we designed our own ramp plank. Um, short of that, um, 3M makes an excellent adhesive anti-skid. Anti I, I guess we, we, we probably ought to clarify that and ask, you know, is this a ramp that you already have and what is that ramp made from? Yeah, th this is Stephen O'Fallon. This is my question. I'm with uh, Mike Tyndall. We have our existing trailer has a ramp that goes from the, uh, the floor of the trailer up about five feet. So it's a double decker. So it's about a five foot rise and a 12 foot run. It's currently, it, it's an older trailer. It's got tread plate on it. The tread plate is a little worn. And when it's wet, it's just an ice rink. So, uh, treacherous. Absolutely. Um, well, that, that 3M product, and that's what we use for several years on our trailers, on our ramps. And uh, we, we put it, you know, we put it horizontally across there. But on yours, you since you're, you, you may want to go longitudinally on that so you've got traction the whole way up, the whole way up. Yeah, um, there are a couple options. Um, you can get that in small sections from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's super expensive that way. I don't recommend it. Um, the best way to secure it is um, Amazon. You can buy it by the roll. Or if you can connect, uh, maybe your uh, district, district um, maintenance department has an agreement with Fastenal. 
um, they can then source that in boxes. Um, and that'll stick to that worn diamond tray. Uh, and we know how slick that is. Um, and that's really the reason we came up with the flying carpet is because that, that second floor, that ramp to the second floor is, is not it's ideal. Problem with that. Yeah. Right. It, right. Is, is your ramp, is it stationary? No, it, uh, it, it's hinged, so it, uh, we use a winch and raise it up, and then we can actually come out of the way. Good. Um, but yeah, that, um, you'll probably want to check out, um, uh, if, you send, if you send me an email uh, at info at clubhousetrailers.com, I'll send you a link to that Fastenal product. Um, it's their own private label, and it's dirt cheap compared to the 3M or compared to Lowe's and Oak Deer. So it would stick over the top of the tread plate. You would need to put it on smooth plate. Right. It will stick on there. What you need to do is clean that tread plate, uh, apply it, and it uses heat to set. So, you know, close the trailer up. Don't walk on it for a couple of days. Let that, you know, let it bake in there. Uh, and it will conform and, uh, and stick very well. And you won't want to try to take it off. That is okay. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. One of the other submitted questions, Christine, that I saw um, previous to our session was about universities. Um, and we, we love us some universities. Um, we are afraid that's going to be our highest growing category uh, here in the coming year. Um, we've been lucky enough to work with some great um, universities already, University of Kentucky, um, TCU down in Fort Worth, uh, Texas A&M University Commerce Campus, uh, was just a recent delivery within the past month. Uh, the Total Electric version. Total Electric, uh, okay. one of our first ones. And um, uh, the universities that we have in the pipeline, uh, dare I say, are robust. Um, those folks are really recognizing the value that the clubhouse brings to marching logistics and how it ups their marching brand, marching band brand within the university. Um, so we're super excited. If that question was submitted by a university, I hope you call us. Any other of the virtual viewers here want to ask a question? Not virtual, yeah, virtual, but live, live viewers. <laughs> it's virtual and live. Okay, well, I guess we can keep going on some of the submitted questions, or maybe we'll do one last one. Let me think. Um, no, no, not that one. I don't know. <laughs> okay, this, this, this one might be interesting. Oh. All right, what component is prone to failure that you over engineer to prevent failure? Every one of them. Oh, goodness. <laughs> So well, just throw it back at me, but. Yeah, I mean, the, the interesting thing is um, the way we designed Bulldog One, and so I'll give you a little bit of backstory and then a little bit of front story. So when our fabulous director, Lynn Ann Faroli, came to Jeff and I and said, guys, I don't care what you have to do, but I want a trailer. We being dutiful band dad said, yes, ma'am. And then spent two years figuring out what the heck that meant and then another nine months building Bulldog One. And our most typical pose during the nine months was us sitting on the floor of the trailer with a whiteboard in front of us. But not a smart board. Just <laughs> an old school white whiteboard. Tab, right. um, trying to figure out what the best design was. What that meant is we didn't, we didn't create things that were prone to failure. Um, and then we had to live with it. We, had, we were stuck with it. Um, but what we do is we constantly innovate. So our powered side stair was created not because our spring retracting stairs had a problem with them. We just think those, the powered side stair is cooler. Um, it is uh, uh, more reliable. We have less moving parts. Um, it has an integrated handrail. It's a constant improvement. And that's some of the challenge that we have here in the clubhouse is the rate and pace at which we're innovating just New stuff up. at with requests from from you know band programs out there that until they get a trailer you know they don't know what it is sometimes that they want so a trailer shows up somebody else tours that trailer says oh that's so cool but what I, if it did this yes can you add this to it so that's where some of this comes from 
Yeah, a great example of that innovation was Texas A&M Commerce. Um, they came to us and said, we love the traditional layout, it's perfect for us, but our speaker carts and our uh, triple uh, pageantry sound cart won't fit underneath downstairs. So, and we don't have enough room behind the end of the floor. So what are you gonna do about it? And I stood on it for months. And before you said anything. Before I said anything to Jeff. Yeah. But what happens is I plant a little bit of a mustard seed and I say, hey Jeff, how about this? And two hours later, I get a full production drawing and the prototype materials have already been ordered and we've got stuff already sitting at the water jet place and we're doing a prototype. So while we don't deal with failure a lot, we deal with innovation a lot. And the innovation comes from the opportunities that are presented by the programs that we support and end up loving. Um, so I'm going to add, add to that, and sorry, Christine, if this if it if it runs long, uh, let me know. Sorry. Come off, you know. But, <laughs> but a perfect example is the ramp that you saw Drew operating out here. That ramp, uh, everybody looks at that, it's like, oh, that's a new ramp. That's so cool, you know. That ramp is the exact same design that we did on the very first ramp, and that was four or five years ago, the Clean School District, when they came to us and said, hey, we want your trailers, but we also want a full width ramp in the back, and we want to be able to close the doors. And uh, so we spent time, we designed that ramp system, spent a lot of time designing a ramp system where today now that's the exact same ramp structure, that was used on the Colleen's. The only difference is we're running electric instead of hydraulic. That's the only difference in them. Yeah, and it just gives us um, increased reliability, less um, less dependence on uh, temperature swings. Hydraulics do crazy things in temperature yeah. and serve its purpose well on the trailers. Yeah, I don't know if Daniel can pan over to our map on the wall, but these are all 96 trailers that we've delivered, and you know we've got a high concentration in Texas which is great, the conditions are pretty typical, but as Daniel pans out, our trailers are starting to go all over the country and we need to be able to accommodate those weather conditions and um, you know, Minneapolis in January, um, where it's or gonna Michigan. be cold, or Michigan um, in January. Yeah, Minneapolis. Yeah. So um, that going to that electric ramp has given, given us increased reliability. Nothing wrong with the hydraulic version, it's just a little bit more temperamental. So that may be a super long answer to a long super answer. short question. Sorry, Christine. That's okay. That was great. Um, we love all the innovations and I, uh, on, in, in all the different trailers that you've built. So I guess there is one last question and then we'll show our uh, contact information. Um, Adam Rexroth asks, he sounds ready to buy because he's asking if there's, uh, is it full for the clubhouse light or custom builds? Is it pay full payment? upon completion and delivery, or do you have financing options? So financing, no. But what we do is we do a really flexible payment schedule. Um, we ask for a, a deposit up front to hold your build slot, um, and then we do progressive payments prior to delivery and then upon delivery. The best thing for us to do is to have a chat about your particular situation, um, come up with a plan that makes sense for you, we're, and if you need assistance in, in fundraising, Daniel had mentioned that uh, earlier, so we can certainly... You know, there are lots of things needs. that we can do that help that. We've helped a lot of programs fundraise. Um, not that we do the fundraising for you, but we've got some great ideas that we've learned from schools all over the country, and it's not mattress fundraisers. So just... Which are uh, good. Apparently they're good. Um, so just, um, we'd love to chat with you about your needs. Um, give us a call and Christine's going to throw up our, our information at the end. Yep, so I think Jennifer has it if Jennifer wants to throw up the final slide so you can contact us if you have any questions. Um, feel free to contact me at Halftime Magazine if you have story ideas or webinar ideas and then feel free to contact Drew and Jeff for more information about Clubhouse trailers. Christine, thank you, for, this thank opportunity. you so for joining us everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to come visit the clubhouse. We absolutely loved being your launch partner for your webinar series. Um, hopefully this all worked well. Hopefully everybody learned something. Um, feel free to contact us. And Christine, thank you to Halftime Magazine for your Gear Up article. Oh, those so many 10 years ago. Uh, it really helped launch a revolution in marching logistics.